Hey guys, Queen Kelly here with you today alone. Derek's out for the day taking care of his kids allegedly, so I'm going to f***ing take over, tell you guys what everyone in these videos is doing right and doing wrong, and I hope you tell me the same in the comments. On February 23rd, 2017, attorneys Victor Revel and Megan Garcia were leaving the courthouse with their client, Lloyd Edwards. After appearing in court in reference to a protection from abuse order initiated by Mr. Edwards' wife, Jasmine. Before leaving the courthouse, Mr. Edwards gave two of his three cell phones to Mr. Revel. As Ms. Garcia, Mr. Revel, and Mr. Edwards exited the courthouse, they were confronted by Deputy Ashworth and Deputy Ratliff of the Blunt County Sheriff's Office in Blunt County, Alabama, who were attempting to serve a search warrant of Mr. Edwards and his vehicle. Hmm. Uh, I'm from the Sheriff's Office. Okay, we have. Do you have any other weapons on your person at this time that I need to know about? You pat you down, make sure you don't have any other weapon. Just for your safety and ours. Mr. Edwards was appearing in court about a protection order issued by his wife. Mrs. Edwards alleged that Mr. Edwards had abused her and their daughter, and testified that Mr. Edwards' cell phones contained proof of her claims. Mrs. Edwards' testimony led the prosecution to pursue a search warrant for Mr. Edwards' person and vehicle, specifically targeting... That's interesting, because here in Illinois, if it, we call it an order of protection... And if the wife initiated against the husband, then this would be a civil action in nature, in which case if the petitioner, the wife in this case, was represented by an attorney, that would be a private attorney and not like the state's attorney's office or the district attorney. The only way a state's attorney or district attorney would be involved in an order of protection is if it corresponded with a criminal case such as a domestic battery. So I find it very interesting that in this county, somehow the state's attorney is representing the wife's interests and then because of it, pursued a search warrant. But it seems like that's what they're saying here. His three cell phones. Mr. Edwards later stated that Mr. Revel... Also, why does he have so many cell phones? <laughs> ...told him that, quote, there may come a day when the prosecution wants your phone. And one of the attorneys asked him for the two phones just before exiting the courtroom. The phones were then placed into Mrs. Garcia's briefcase prior to exiting the building. The warrants that you all have are for his person That's and, right. for, and for his vehicle. That's correct. So he has given the phone that's on his person. Okay, I have video of him handing the phone to you. You hand the phone to her. It's in the satchel right now. Yeah, you all do have that, but that is not on... When you all no, I'm not here for house with Brian. Phone, on the that was not on his person. Okay. So you all are not entitled to that. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll go the other route to get that other phone. Okay, we're standing here and we, we have it on video that he handed his um, cell phone to his attorney, uh, one, and they handed it to another, and it's in the satchel that is right here. Well, we she doesn't detained? seem too concerned. At this moment in time, <laughs> they're not denying it. We have I'm it on video. I'm going to detain you until we determine the next course of action. Give me well, just a minute. Well, I have this okay. person and vehicle. Okay, we either need the phone out of the satchel or we will have to detain you and get a search warrant to get the phone. So you're gonna, well. But that is very interesting. That's one thing I was thinking about with the phones. Like they're alleging that there's evidence of the abuse on the phones. You think that that would be contained in the petition for the order of protection. If that's the case, the chances that that evidence is still on the phone is slim to none unless they do like a data dump on the phones. Um, and that's absolutely why I would, speculate that the husband gave the phones to the um, attorney. And now the issue is, do they have the right to detain the attorney and her bag when they know that the phones are in there? I would say probably yes, because of the exigent circumstances, because the evidence could be so easily lost. But let's see how this progresses. Okay. Uh well, we're not going to give you this. We're not going to give you anything that's on our person that you don't have a, a, a right to. So if you detain us, you know you got there's you have to have you have to have you know certain there's certain constitutional safeguards to do that. But you're going to detain us, then hey, we're not going to run. So are you, are, and you all are telling us we are being detained. Is that right? Um, this, right, right now, what? you are being Very detained. Now, yeah. 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 okay. You both are under arrest for obstructing government operations. Obstructing government operations. That's correct. Threatening government operations. Okay. This is definitely an unlawful arrest. But 
We're under arrest. We're under arrest. You don't have no weapon on you at all. Of course not. Okay. We have it on video. We have not. We have not broken the law. So if you're arresting us, I agree with that. The phones were given to her before the search warrant was executed. It sounds to me like at the time that the search warrants were given to the female attorney, she had no knowledge of the search warrant. So the fact that she has them in their prop in her property and the search warrant does not give the right to search her or her property. They have absolutely not done anything illegal. I do think that they have the right to detain them because of the exigent circumstances and then go get a different search warrant for her bag. And I would say that they here in Illinois would have 72 hours to hold them. But I think that that woman in the pink kind of messed up where she's saying you're being arrested for threatening government operations or whatever, they haven't committed a crime. There's That's two different issues here. I'm being arrested for obstructing government operations. That's correct. Let me take off this right here. Uh, if you don't mind, take the talk. That way, you're not going to lie. Do y'all want to arrest two lawyers for this car? You sure you want to do this? Are you subject to the law? I am subject to the law. Okay. Right away. Okay. And this is... And you, and what's, who are you? I'm Sue Ashworth. Sue Ashworth? That's correct. And you can find my And And you're, and you're arresting us under her orders? I want to make sure that you know from our position, our position was that this search warrant, this, uh, this warrant was given to him after he, he gave us some, some things for us to use in his defense. And so we did not but do anything to keep you all from doing you all's job. If I was him, I'd stop talking, though. He's already in handcuffs. He's not changing their mind. Um, Sit here and watch. You and him and her. Doesn't matter. You can't believe you get about 10 or 15 minutes. You look good. Matter of fact, you did look up at the camera two or three times. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, you did look up. You did look up. Yeah, I did. Yeah, you 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 did. He was feeling with, I'm guessing, a password, and after a short period of time, he handed it back to you. You handed it to her, and she put it in here. Okay? That is evidence for this search warrant. And, and you agree with me that you all served this search warrant on subsequent to that, after that, right? Yeah. After we left out the bill. Yes. The deputies fail to understand the authoritative limitations of the search warrant, and Mr. Revel and Mrs. Garcia were arrested and charged under code 13A-10-2. The prosecution initially offered to drop the charges if Mr. Revel agreed to write a letter apologizing and admitting that the deputies did nothing wrong, but Mr. Revel rejected their offer and decided to proceed with a trial. Ultimately, Judge King acquitted Mr. Revel and Mrs. Garcia of all charges and stated that the deputies were wrong about the authority of the search warrant and that the defendants never physically prevented the deputies from carrying out their duties. Mr. Revel and Mrs. Garcia were forced to recuse themselves from Mr. Edwards's case after filing two separate federal lawsuits against Deputy Ratliff. That thought popped into my head too. Like as soon as the two attorneys got placed into handcuffs, I was thinking now they have a conflict, right? By between preserving their best interests and also protecting the rights of their client whose property they now have in their possession. So that's kind of a very interesting twist that occurred with all of this. I agree with the attorneys here. It was really a matter of interpreting the search warrant. I believe that the attorneys had the correct interpretation of the search warrant. I actually also did think it was smart that the male attorney asked the sheriff, do you agree with me that you served the search warrant subsequent to seeing me take the phones? And he said, yes. So he got that statement on body worn camera. I thought that was smart. Um, I wouldn't have accepted the deal either to write an apology saying that they did nothing wrong, um, that the officers did nothing wrong if I was the attorney in this case. Um, the problem I see here is that they actually charged the attorneys. Like, again, I think that they had every right to detain them, go try and get a search warrant for that female attorney's bag, get the phones, and then release them without charging. Um, but I certainly wouldn't have... Um, written the apology letter. I think that that could have been construed as an um, admission of guilt, even if the charges were dismissed against them. That could potentially also affect um, their ability to expunge the arrest 
and charge as well, which they would absolutely want to do as attorneys. And Deputy Ashworth, as well as District <clears throat> Attorney Casey and the Assistant District Attorney, Scott Gilliland. So yeah, I thought that that was very interesting. I thought the attorneys definitely did um, the right thing there. And it sounds like they were found not guilty and now have some civil lawsuits on their hands. Hopefully they got a few dollars out of it as well. Well, protecting his client, that is what a local attorney says he was doing when he was arrested by Metro for telling the woman not to talk with officers. 13 Action News reporter Brian Callahan has more on the controversy and the attorney's history with this type of case. Of course, they arrested me because I told my client not to talk to them. Stephen Stubbs spent Friday morning being booked into the Clark County Detention Center for obstruction, but the attorney says all he was doing was protecting his client's rights after she was in a crash. While we were there, a police officer came up behind me um, and told the EMTs she's in custody. I say to her, uh, don't talk to the police. Stubbs says the officer didn't like those instructions. He threatened me with arrest if I ever told her that again. He says he and a Metro supervisor managed to de-escalate things at the scene and he headed to the hospital to wait for his client. About a half hour later, um, a uh, nurse comes and gets me. While he was in the room with his client, Stubbs says the same officer came in. And then he tries to start talking to her again. And then I tell her, um, don't talk to the police. That's when Stubbs says things escalated with the officer writing that Stubbs was warned twice by the officers to leave and once by a hospital security guard before he was taken into custody. Stubbs said the officers never asked him to leave, only the security guard. But even after spending an hour in cuffs, Stubbs says officers initially offered to let him leave. Very nicely, I just said, can I please have a supervisor? He said, why? And I said, well, I want to know if a report's going to be filed on me being put in handcuffs for an hour. And, uh, and he said, well, then you're going to jail. And this isn't the first time Stubbs has been arrested for obstruction. He was found not guilty in connection with the 2013 arrest after instructing a client not to speak with officers then. Arrested me for obstruction, same way this is being done, because I refused to leave my client's side. Um, I find that very interesting. I would like to know a little bit more about the facts. I'd want to know if the client that was in the accident um, was his existing client, like a past hired client, for example, and then got into the accident and contacted him and he arrived on the scene based on that information or if he just saw an accident pulled up and saw an opportunity um, to possibly get a client um, because the first would be ethical and the second wouldn't be. Um, the second would actually be an interference with a police investigation, in which case I could see how the police would get frustrated. Um, if it's the first instance and she was a past hired client um, and they had discussed a retainer and all that kind of stuff, um, then I would say that he did have the right to be there. When somebody is both in custody and under interrogation, which it sounds like might have been what was happening at the hospital, then the suspect or the client has to invoke their rights to remain silent and that they want an attorney present. If you say that you want an attorney present while you are in custody and under interrogation, then the police must stop questioning. An attorney cannot invoke that right for you, nor can anybody else. I don't see a problem with the attorney advising the client in that situation to invoke their rights. I definitely don't see that as an obstruction of investigation either, but I would say that there are some key pieces of information that are missing that we didn't get um, during that news clip. The other thing is too, they bring up this 2013 arrest and he was found not guilty. Well, you can't use an acquittal against somebody in the future. You can't say, well, he did this in 2013, but he was found not guilty. So therefore that means that he was guilty of this offense. You wouldn't be able to bring it up in court due to the fact that he was found not guilty. And you also can't use it to show like a propensity to commit the same type of acts. So I thought that it was interesting, but I definitely think we were missing a lot of information there. On July 10th, 2021, civil rights attorney Emmanuel Olawale was moving some bags of trash from his vehicle to a dumpster behind his rented office in Westerville, Ohio. Based on concerns of illegal dumping, which a statement from the Westerville Chief of Police suggests is a common reason for officer investigations, officers Dan Ruth and Matthew Bauman of the Westerville Division of Police pulled in behind Mr. Olawale, exited their vehicle, and approached him. Hi there. Your office is here? I own an office here. 
Okay, which office is it? The Ottawa Law Firm. The what? Here's my business card. Okay. All right. ID. Huh? Show you my ID. Yeah, if you don't mind, can we see your ID? Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, that is pretty cool. That's a slick uh, business card. Yep. All it's right. laminated. I'll give it to him. <laughs> um, you can keep doing what you're doing. We're just, again, we're kind of concerned. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Seeing somebody dump them, but just up there. Mm -hmm. So. Can right. I have you back? Just no, don't run it. Uh, don't have to, don't. No, don't run my card. Don't run my ID. Huh? Don't run my ID. Don't run your ID? You have no reason to. Well, we're going to at least mark it down. We're going to take down your information? Nope. I'm on my property. Put in trash in mine. Cash okay. In. But this is, wait, this is not just your property. It's several people's I property. Okay. I'm also thinking, too, about, like, the probable cause to stop and have this conversation. It's kind of a Terry stop right now. I mean, here in Chicago, I've never heard of it being a problem with people <clears throat> throwing trash away or that, like, triggering some sort of red flag to the police, but apparently in this city it is. But I'm not violating any law. So don't no one said ID. that you're violating, violating no, any law. No, 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 no. Don't run my ID. I'm a lawyer. I know my rights. Okay. I'm not violating I know my law. rights. I'm on my property. There's no suspicion. No one called anybody. So don't run my ID. I only identify myself so that this won't escalate. That's fine. But we can still mark down who we're out with. And so that's what we're going to do. No. Yes. This stop me. This, don't turn yes. this into an issue. Sir, you are turning this into an issue. We're just simply marking down who we're out with. Yeah. So he's I'm just going to write it down on a piece of oh, paper. It's just, just, yeah. it's just your name. Why? Because, sir, we are out with you because we were concerned that you were illegally dumping. But, but you, you already discovered Do you want me to show you my office? I understand that you're here, but I don't know if this dumpster belongs to you or somebody else in the in the it complex. It belongs to me. To you and you alone. Yes. Can you prove that that dumpster belongs to you and you alone? This dumpster belongs to the property. Okay, and that's I'm my. I'm my stuff in there. That's my point, though. Is it if it's also other units? So what? We belongs to everybody. We're paying okay. for it. It doesn't really matter if it belongs to all the unit. That's fine. Just give me back my ID. Thank yeah. you. Thank Hi. You. Don't worry, everything is under control. And that's my wife. Okay, okay. that's no, fine. Do you want your you card came, back? Yeah, I understand you came to check, but trying to run my ID to find anything, no, that's illegal. That is not illegal. But, okay, you can finish stumping if you like. Thank you. All right, just turn around and get out of here, and then we'll look him up. I don't think that the cops technically did anything wrong. It seemed like maybe a Terry stop or even maybe a community caretaking function regarding the dumping, which in the beginning of the video, they said that that seems to be a problem in their area. Um, so I would say that was fine. And the attorney is actually the one that offered the cops um, his ID and his business card. In my opinion, I mean, here in Illinois, they absolutely have the right to run it. They can see if there's a warrant out for somebody's arrest. If he was driving, they can make sure that his license is not suspended. It is absolutely not illegal to run uh, that person's name and information, nor would it be illegal to ask him for the ID um, if you're the officer in the situation, he didn't volunteer it. So I thought that it was not the smartest thing to automatically say to the officers, oh, I have an officer, I have an office here, and then say, oh, do you want my ID, do you want my ID, and then say, don't run it. That just raised red flags to me, that's very suspicious. Um, to play devil's advocate, I mean, if the officers had a bad intention, like for example, if they maybe were racially profiling and thought that just because he was African American in the parking lot with like no other cars around and throwing things out, obviously that would be a problem. Um, from a legal technical standpoint, I don't see that ever really coming out in court, especially if the dumping is like a common issue in this area. Um, the other thing is that, I mean, if the interaction really did end here and they ran him and he had nothing to hide, had no warrants, was valid and no arrest ever occurred, then this case is never going to be in court. About the courtroom outburst by a Seminole County judge. Take a listen. I am dismissing this charge. Circuit Judge Frederick Schott, Marit Judges don't have the right to dismiss a charge. Only prosecutors have the right to dismiss a charge. Rated a prosecutor after the judge decided to throw out a jury's guilty verdict in a DUI case. General Lines Kathy Velich is live in Seminole County. And Kathy, you questioned the public defender's office today about the judge's reaction. What happened? 
Right, the public defender's office here believes the judge was really angry over what it calls questionable testimony from the officer that no one from the sheriff's office was available to do the breath test in the DUI case. The accused driver told us today she didn't know what was going on. Lisette Gonzalez insists she's innocent, is grateful to the judge, but says the whole thing was upsetting. At the moment, I don't know what was going on. All I know was crying. The officer said he didn't ask her to do a breathalyzer test because no one from the sheriff's office was available to do it. Even so, he indicated she had an unlawful blood or breath alcohol level, which automatically suspended her license for six months. But you did not know what her blood or breath alcohol was at all, did you? That's correct. Were you drunk? Oh no, excuse me, I'm sorry. The jury found her guilty, but Seminole County Judge Fred Schott threw out the verdict and went on a tirade accusing the officer of lying and even of maybe breaking the law. To take it up on appeal with him lying about it. The case should have never been broken. Never. And we'll find out why your license was suspended and if somebody broke the law to cause your license to be suspended. The PD's office says the sheriff's office refuted the officer's claim about the breath test. The evidence showed there are breath test operators always available to give a breath test and that this officer said that there is not, which is not true. But Sanford police say body cam video shows the officer asking for an operator and being told it would be three hours. The state is appealing. A hearing is set. I think that that is interesting. I mean, the uh, breath operators do have to be certified. So for whatever reason, it's a small county. They were shorthanded. Maybe they didn't have somebody available or they said on the body worn camera, they said it would be three hours. If you asked the suspect if they were willing to comply with a breath test and it would be three hours, you would have the choice to wait there. You could also potentially take them to another county's or um, police department's station to see if maybe they had somebody to do the breath test there and then just create a written report about that. Obviously, the off officer messed up here by saying that her blood alcohol content was above the legal limit when he had no right to know that. But one thing I'm thinking is here in Illinois, there's two DUI charges. One is that your blood alcohol content is above a 0 0.08. They can only charge you with that if they know that through you submitting to a breath test or um, urine or blood. And then there's also a charge that's basically just saying you're so under the influence of alcohol that that rendered you incapable of safely driving. And that charge, we don't know what your blood alcohol content was, and they try to prove that you are driving under the influence of alcohol beyond a reasonable doubt through admissions of drinking, you know, how your balance was, your speech, the field sobriety test. That's something um, Derek and I talked about in a previous video of why officers do field sobriety tests here. So I don't know if possibly in this state there's not that additional um, DUI charge, but it sounds like the jury found her guilty and the judge believed that that was like against the manifest weight of the evidence. So he could throw out their verdict and then order a new trial, but he wouldn't have the right to dismiss the case. Dismissing the case is like throwing it out. That would be before a trial even occurred. So I don't know if maybe just the news is using the wrong terminology here, but that's kind of why I said that in the beginning. The hearing is set here for May, but the PD's office says it's going to file a motion to argue that the case is over. Reporting live at the Seminole County. Also not a legal motion, but <laughs> we get the point. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happened there. If I mean, if I was the state's attorney, I certain, certainly wouldn't refile those charges or go for another trial. Um, one thing I think that maybe people don't know is that prosecutors actually take an oath that they will do justice. So that doesn't mean prosecuting everybody to the fullest extent of the law. They actually should be analyzing cases and deciding if this case should be prosecuted or this case shouldn't. Maybe this one you could have looked at it and said, the police messed up here. Doesn't make sense to take it to a jury trial, spend taxpayer money, maybe offer the suspect here or the defendant um, an offer that they couldn't refuse instead of going to a jury trial. Well, there you have it. I hope that you enjoyed watching me watch these videos by myself today. Um, if you did enjoy this, please let us know. If you wish Derek was here, let us know that too. Also, if there's a different type of video that you would like us to see, there is a link and we would love to hear what you want us to react to. See you next time.